first interview. Uh, I have to say this, but welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm here with Ryan Mariano and Nick Bowling out of RPM Sand Volleyball Club out here in Phoenix. And I've had the privilege of getting to know them for over five years now. They started their beach club from nothing, um, I think out in Flagstaff in 2013. And just, it's really cool to see how fast this club has grown. Um, I don't want to be biased, but they're at least um, top three beach club um, in the country. So I'm really happy to be here with them. And we're going to be talking um, a lot of, about a lot of different topics. Um, four of the main things are, I just want to get a good insight on just how in their eyes the um, beach has grown um, over the past five years. Um, in Phoenix, um, there was no beach clubs when I was growing up and graduated high school in 2014. So I want to get their insight. Also, what a recruiting process looks like. How do um, they get their players to go to the D1 level? Um, did some research and they've re recruited six or put 64 um, players at the D1 collegiate level. So that's crazy impressive for just one club. And um, also want to go over just like what a, a season typically looks like for beach clubs. Um, I think it'd be helpful for a lot of parents to kind of just see what they're doing since they're, you know, top three in the country for clubs and also what they're kind of telling their girls um, to do, whether that's workouts, drills, um, how they're, you know, monitoring and going through this quarantine and kind of staying together and what they're telling their girls. So I hope this guy, this video um, helps you guys out one way or another, but excited to be here and yeah, we'll get started. About seven years ago, uh, the AVP in Al Lau were working, they were working really hard with the NCAA to try and get it going. And Pepperdine got in and a couple of USC and a couple of other schools got in and said, hey, look, we'll give it a try. Yeah. Right about then, we started having some of the volleyball clubs jump up. And there, there was some success. NCAA kind of said, hey, let's go ahead and give it a, give it a run. And it went from I think 10 schools to 15 and then yeah. from 15 to 25 and uh, once that happened just naturally the, the club started to evolve yeah. um, mostly in Southern California and then we <laughs> jumped in yeah <laughs> with all Arizona let's yeah, go <laughs> there we go with, with all four players right yeah only and, four players yeah, start off <laughs> huge to start four yeah and um we had some success, you know, Elite had some success. They became kind of the feeder to the colleges. And um, there was a gold medal and there was There's a no national championship. Right. And then it exploded. Yeah. And within seven years, it was a handful of schools and two or three clubs to 130 schools and just clubs all the way across right. the country yeah um and it, it, it's been it's been a neat roller coaster to watch yeah. um, and I, I think it's also given people an opportunity to say indoor just wasn't for me i now have a place to go right and i think a combination of college picking it up and then people being comfortable saying i don't i don't know where to go next so i'm gonna go try the beach yeah and as we all know once you get on the beach, it's over. Yeah. So, yeah. I know it's it's crazy just to think back in 2013, like we, I was still like, when I went to college, I was going back and forth from beach to indoor. All the indoor girls, like whether you liked it or not, were like, go to the beach, like we're going to the beach today. Like that was all of spring and tons of players liked it. A lot of people did not and they're like, why are we doing this? But I think it's cool to come back now and just realize how much how many players just pick beach over indoor. I think it's just crazy. I mean, you guys have, I don't know how many players in your club? 70 now. 
70. 70. So yeah. 4 to 70, and, and you guys could probably do a lot more than 70. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I just think it's really crazy how that has, you know, happened and how fast college beach volleyball has grown since then, too. Like, now you have clubs getting into, you know, college now. And, I don't know, I think it's, yeah, I think it's crazy. Oh my gosh. Cool. Classic He's color. toying. <laughs> we do this in Spanish? Well, I'll see you guys later. I'll ban the camera. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, wait. <my God>. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, the next question that I kind of am actually really interested in is just the recruiting process of beach volleyball. Um, you know, I you know was recruited for indoor, and a lot of people I think right now have been recruited for indoor. And um, yeah, I think just a lot of parents would like to know what that looks like. Because um, for me, as an outsider, not knowing a lot about it, it's just like okay, go to all these summer tournaments and play in a lot of them, and hopefully college coaches will look at you and contact you, and maybe you'll go. Like that's. As an outsider, not knowing a ton about it, it just seems like you need to go to the tournaments. And I did some research and I was looking at all these different tournaments that kids go to and there's AAU tournaments, CBBAs, AVP firsts, USA tournaments, P1440, there's so many tournaments, but I think it'd be nice to know like, yeah, what the recruiting process looks like, what tournaments do you go to, how does the season look like, and yeah, how do you guys like navigate trying to get your players recruited to the collegiate level? I think a lot of it has to do with just trying to find the tournaments that they can qualify for. Um, a lot of those big national championships have qualifiers along the way to just take it in. And like you said, there's so many of them that right. going and saying, okay, well, I didn't qualify for this one, but I qualified for this one, that'll help you kind of get yeah. you those yeah. Right. Yeah, so, and, and figuring out what's available to you. So, if your family, for example, only has a week of vacation, making sure that you take the time to look and say, okay, so the BBCA runs from the 2nd to the 7th, right. and the AAU runs from the 8th to the 10th. I have That's to do good. that. Like, right. how do I get that in? How do I maximize my time yeah. versus having a couple of dead days in between tournaments? Mm -hmm. um, so being efficient, so do you encourage kids to go from like, say like their entire summer is just open or they have like a month, are you encouraging them to go like tournament, 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 or like a dead day, like how do you guys, or do you just encourage them to just play as much as they can or their family allows? Yeah, I think we push tournaments responsibly. Right. So we don't want them to say, start on the second, take the seventh off, and play all the way through and then take the 17th off mm -hmm. and then jump into say the AVP where they're side by side with Hermosa and right. just be totally gassed when yeah. you know all of the college coaches are gonna be at that event because it overlaps the AVP so they can right. go, they can, they can, they can watch you, they can watch the juniors, they can watch the pros. Right. So being responsible with it's important mm -hmm. and just kind of factoring in rest and being comfortable saying, hey, I want to play in the AAU Nationals, and then I want to go play in the BBCA, and I'm going to take that three-day break in between and do nothing. Yeah. And and being comfortable with that and not right. feeling like you got to grind the summer. Yeah. Um, but we had to learn that as well, because yeah. when we went, we were like, you start on the circuit, and we'll see you on we're the. We're gonna 30th. go until we yeah. die. <laughs> yeah. And we will ship you home when yeah. you're finished. Let's go. <laughs> um, and then we realized we were having a lot more success. Just kind of just tapering. taking, yeah, little breaks here and there. Yeah, yeah and, and like you said, be responsible about it. We had a lot of kids when we first started. Oh, we are. We're taking our family vacation. This is the vacation my whole family is getting for the summer. Right. We want to go to Disneyland while we're here. We want to go do this while we're here. Yeah. Well, that's okay. You got to plan those things in for your rest days, though. Yeah. You can't be walking around Disneyland all day long. And then be like, hey, tournament tomorrow. <laughs> that's yeah. the worst. Well, playing the national championships. Yeah. Well, yeah. I got 63,000 so. steps in yesterday. You're like, oh, oh yeah, what? Yeah, you're like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you might want to go nap. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so what tournaments, so 
for college coaches, like what are you? What are the main tournaments you think that you see the most college coaches going to? So you said the tournaments kind of leading up to the AVPs, or would you say the AVP like first? I don't. Even, I think sometimes those are before the actual AVPs. But um, are there ones that stick out to you the most that you would encourage kids, or you would say those are the most um, popular to attend? Yeah, I'd say there's probably three major events um, that typically the college coaches will go to uh, if they have to travel. Um, travel from like the East Coast. So you'll have the BBCA, which is the biggest club versus club essentially. So you go in and that's where you win your you know, top club titles. Okay. The AVP, obviously, because yeah. it, it, it just it, works. It, it's all encompassing. They get right. to watch their friends or their pros and they get to watch the juniors. Yeah. And then I think in there, you, you kind of have to do a little bit of research for that third one because the AAU Junior Olympics, if you can get a bid, um, it, it was essentially the first one. Yeah. So it kind of has the stigma. The first one of the summer? or The, 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 first, first, the first ever it national was the, championship. Oh, okay. It was the first AAU's was the go first, after it. Okay, yeah. beach championship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that has the kind of the name behind it. Gotcha. Um, so you, it's you, you've got to do that one or do you do like a new 1440 right. so you, you kind of have to do your research and see where it falls yeah, um, see and, and see what's overlapping like yeah you know he's saying some of these things some of the tournaments i think they try to get together and kind of figure it out to spread it out that's good yeah. but like this last year was the first year first year since we've been going that usa was on the west coast so the uh, east coast before that okay. p1440 okay. had their first national championship this last year so kind of us trying to yeah. see where everyone's at. Right. Are these tournaments within like two months or how does that work? Are they, because I don't, because I would assume you guys train from in the fall, winter, spring, and then kids start getting out of school in May. And then what happens from there? Like what's kind of the time frame of, you know, AAUs, you know, BBCA, AVPs? It's about a three week, it usually starts somewhere around the 6th of July. Okay. And then... Right after the 4th. Yep. <laughs> to give them a day the to clean up. The last party, and yeah. then we get to work. <laughs> totally. They give one recovery day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then off to work, and then we're driving back on the 30th. And it's okay. just about every day with the occasional day off in between. Um, and like, he says, he says every day, that's 12s, 14s, 16s, 18s. Right. Not overlapping. We're there every day. Okay. Uh, some of the kids will have... Okay, I played in 16s for this event, but 16s for the next event is not for a few more Right, days, so. okay, so they get a little bit of rest time at least. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that, from a recruiting standpoint, that might help narrow things down, mm -hmm. is do a little bit of legwork first. You know, if, uh, if I wanted to go play at Stanford, for example, or UCLA, or LMU, or wherever, I would reach out to those coaches and say, where are you gonna be? Yeah. Or, you know, I'm a, I'm a junior, I'm interested in your school, this is my schedule. Yeah. And hopefully they would get back and, and say, okay, great, I'll see you at, you know, the, the AAUs and T1440. Right. Yeah. And that way you know a month in advance, I need to prioritize these times. Yeah. Um, yeah. So picking your tournaments early enough to get in contact with these college coaches yeah. and reaching out, being proactive. So it's basically becoming like indoor, you know, per se. Because I remember indoor, I'm like, hey, I'm going to this qualifier um, on this day. We're in the morning pool. Like you got to be specific, right? Like if you want, you know, college coaches to look at you, um, you don't want to be, I guess, obnoxious. But at the same time, it's like you or you're trying to promote yourself. Like that they're doing 10,000 different things. There's thousands of other girls doing the same thing. So I guess you would say just kind of be obnoxious and proactive about it. Yep, squeaky yeah. wheel them. Yeah. You go until they respond, even right. if they say no. And yeah. then you- And then you then, move on. Then you know, you say, hey, look, they said no. And then you kind of narrow your path every time. You start right. getting yeses and, um, and you can move forward. Yeah. And, and that's, that's an important part of the process. Like when you played, you always had the best of the best. There were two options. There was USA, yeah. and there was AAU. Mm -hmm. And they didn't overlap. 
So you always played against the best of the best of the best. Right. So the tournaments that you won, you knew you beat everybody, yeah. and the colleges went there. Yeah. They knew, hey, I'm going to go watch HP. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to go watch AAU, yeah. and then I'm out. I'm Anything saying. other than that, I don't need to go watch because right. they're the best of the best. Yeah. And now that things are spread out, recruiting becomes a little bit more important yeah. with, you know, making sure that you're playing against quality competition. Yeah, there's more tournaments, and I have to prioritize which ones do I go to, which yes. ones are worth my money and my time going to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just crazy, because I remember just going, like, when I was going over to California, there was just CBBAs, and then I think there was, like, the USA National Championships, yep. and now, now just to talk about the five or six different levels and different championships, it's crazy. It's only been six years seven years yeah. and but yeah so I guess the main thing is be proactive and um, reach out to coaches um, kind of prioritize your time which ones you want to go to and I think talking to if players are part of clubs talking to their coaches and kind of coaches having a plan too like yeah. as a club which ones do we want to go to and which are going to rep represent as well I guess yeah. so I guess you guys do you guys pick certain tournaments? Do you guys kind of like bring them together or talk about it? Or is it kind of based off of you kind of give it to the family to decide? We'll give recommendations. Yeah, I mean, we kind, of, we kind of put a schedule out there at the beginning that says, hey, you know, we've got this event, this event, this event, this event. Yeah. This is what they are, okay. you know? And then we'll kind of go back and look, hey, what bids did you get? Which ones did you qualify for? Right. Because if you worked your butt off to qualify for all of them, yeah. and you didn't get the bid that we were planning on going to, it's just tough for us. So we try and accommodate as much as we can, but yeah. we do some of those overlaps that are tough for us. But, I know it's crazy because you guys are monitoring 70 different girls. You're trying to get them seen by their coaches. You guys, I think it's also good to note that coaches like you are interacting with college coaches too. So. Um, not only are the girls responsible for, you know, you know, getting their name out there, their video, talking to the coaches, but I think also for you guys um, and other coaches to know that it's kind of their job to a certain degree to talk to these other coaches. Like, what are you looking for? A defender? How tall? Like, what kind of style of player? Because that's how you guys have gotten 64 girls to the collegiate level, which is crazy. So I think coaches being proactive themselves is important too. Yeah. Wilson becomes this synonymous name yeah. with the sport and um, with, AVP, yeah. with the AVP, and, and it's nice. It's it's nice for the kids to realize that they are supported by such a, a great company. Yeah. You know, and and I, yeah, I think it's it's. I don't even know if there's AVP first or next when I was growing up, but I think that's really cool for them to you know, play their tournament, and sometimes they even get to go on center court and just kind of see what that feels like. Like, yeah. that's sick. Like, if you're 14 yeah. years old and you're like, oh, oh yeah. my gosh, this is what it feels like, yeah. to just to get, like, just a little bit of, like, an insight, just, like, you know, pushes their dreams that much more. Because totally. they're like, I, I know what it feels like to be there. Like, I want to, you know, work just like them. And um, I think it's cool how AVP kind of just brings the youth with them and has the tournaments on the side and yeah. um, it definitely does connect us with them um, to a certain degree and um, yeah whether that's just like after we play like getting to autograph getting to talk to them and um, I think it just creates a, a level of relatability too just like we're just like them we were just like them yeah. and it just takes yeah. like hard work and practice and going to these, you know, AVP, AAU tournaments yeah. to get, you know, there. And well, our 14s played the national championships in Hermosa there, oh. and they get to play the finals on stadium court. Oh, really? So as they're walking past the big Wilson ball under the court, like, I can't even imagine what that feels yeah, like. Yeah, their hearts, like, 
at 14, yeah. the stadium's yeah. packed. You know, they're walking right past that big Wilson ball and onto the court and going, oh, wow. Yeah, they're just well, gonna, they're gonna remember that forever and Wilson's in the background, ABP is because, like, they're able to do that because of them. Yeah. So I think that's yeah, and, really special. Yeah, and one of the things that's neat and I think starts to really separate you know, title sponsors like Wilson is they're the universal ball, right? Like, yeah. they don't have to be doing that. No. Because they're the best brand that you can have for the sport. For so, a lot of, yeah, for a lot of sports. For a lot of sports. So for them to step up and be so proactive yeah. and, and having the, the network of athletes, you know, like mm-hmm. you guys and, and, and the team Wilson, yeah. um, it, it's huge. And, yeah. and it, it's grown it's grown the ABP, it's grown the Yeah, you, you've seen it grow first-handedly from when you were playing, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, was, was that, when did, yeah, was there a lot of relatability or connecting with, you know, youth players at the time? Or was it very, like, okay, we're playing our, you know, our match, we're going to the tent? Like, was there a lot of interaction when you were a pro, or? Not really. I mean, it was more fan base. Uh, okay. They didn't have the junior side of it. Um, you always tried to make time for the juniors. You always, yeah. you know, you, you, you spend the extra 20 minutes signing autographs, things like that. Um, but there was really no, like, no Set. one sponsor that said, right. hey, we're unified. Yeah. Because there wasn't really a junior's opportunity. Yeah. Um, and when I was on tour, it was Crocs uh, and oh, Cuervo. Right. Yeah. So, those are more of an adult. Yeah, the, and those well, are you know, those are two sponsors that are probably not totally engaged in the juniors community. Right, maybe uh, the little crocs. And yeah, the, yeah, the, the little crocs. <laughs> uh, tell the little fuzzy ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, to have a sponsor that can Takes kind of bridge time. that bridges that gap yeah. is is huge, and then to be able to tap into the junior side and, and make right. them make them feel. Like, like they're, they're a part of it. They're a total part of it. And they will be a part of it. Just it, it's yeah. going to be a matter of time. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. It's and that ball, I even, I even take pictures of that. <laughs> <laughs> the big ball? Yeah, I'm like, dude, come on, hurry, snap a tip. Well, which ball? This ball or the optics ball? Which one? I'm waiting to see the 60-foot optics ball. The optics, optics ball was in Hawaii. Yeah, but could you imagine the big 60 foot blow up optics? Yeah, oh, true. <laughs> uh, I want to was, see it, that one. was that not in Hawaii? That big optics pole? Oh, maybe it was in my dream or something. <laughs> it was so It was new. there. It was busy chasing you. It was there. Like, Get off me! <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It may have been. I may have missed. I think you're wrong. Looked. But I mean, I'm sure you did the same things, but I get pictures all the time from people. Check it out, and they have gone to an ABP event. And where do they take their picture? Right in front of the Big Wilson Ball. Yeah. You know, every person that I get a picture from, friends, family, right. they've gone to an event. They're like, "This is so cool." Yeah. We're back with Nick Bowling and Ryan Mariano for our next segment. Um, the next question that I wanted to know is: We just got off talking about the recruiting process. But what do you think coaches look for in a player when they're recruiting kids for whether that's D1, D2, D3? Is there anything over the years that has stood out to you guys? And whether that's, yes, athletic ability, but is there anything else that kind of just sticks out to you that they're really looking for? Yeah, uh, there are a few, there are a few things that I think coaches just universal, universally are looking for. Academics is one. Mm-hmm. Um, with our program, we, we work hard to make sure that we stay up on the kids' grades. We don't have a, we don't have a GPA minimum, mm-hmm. but we do have the conversations with the kids. I, I know Nick's had it, I've had it, where the conversation becomes, hey, if you're interested in these schools, your GPA has to be a 3.5 or better. Right. Um, and I, I don't think people understand the importance of that. They're like, hey, I got a 3.0, right. so I'm good to go. Where a lot of universities are like, hey, that's great, but... But she's... you're not even in college, and now you're going to be doing weights at 6 a.m., practice, yeah. class, you know, 
Yep. Um, and you know, all that. Yeah, and when it comes down to, hey, you're as good as she is, but she's got a three five. Right. She's less of a flight risk. Yeah. So I can give her maybe some academic money that I can't give you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a big one. Yeah, that's big. And uh, as as we talked about, um, just kind of getting an understanding of what the coaches want because everybody has something different. Yeah. Um, you you've played for multiple coaches throughout your career, mm -hmm. and every coach may want something similar, but different. Mm -hmm. And getting a good understanding and a baseline of what each kid uh, can do, mm -hmm. and can it even match up to what Stein Metzger wants? Right. Um, from an athletic standpoint, from an intellect standpoint, uh, yeah. those are things that you have What's to figure realistic? out. Yeah. 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 And, and so those are two big things that are really important from an understanding standpoint for the recruitment process. Yeah. Um, from a total base for colleges. Okay. I think it's uh, I think a big piece of it too is you know us being able to sell that athlete and that coach being able to come back to us and say, okay, you gave me that athlete. I like what you sold me. What yeah. Else you have? Right. You know, some of those kids in our program paved the way for a lot of the other kids that are kind of coming through. Yeah, now college coaches go straight to your club now. Mm -hmm. right. What do you guys have for me to, to see defenders, walkers? Yeah, um, yeah and, and, and from an attitude standpoint, I think a lot of the coaches now kind of understand what they're getting from us in an athlete because the culture we kind of, yeah, our culture is a little bit different. Right. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, growing up for indoor-wise, I was always taught that um, college coaches for sure when they're going to these qualifiers they're looking at athletic ability like are they going to be are you going to be a great setter for their team or but I think um, what's cool about beach now in college is that it's a team sport so I think I have not been in the club you know scene but I have to assume that being like just having a like, good character being a good teammate to your partner and now that these kids are part of something bigger than just them and their partner they're a part of their club they're representing their club when they go to these tournaments now it's just it's not like when I was growing up it's me and someone you know one of my friends and we go over to CBBA like there's nothing really behind me but now these people are you know playing for something bigger than themselves and I think that um, being a good teammate and like figuring that out and what that looks like I think I would hope college coaches look for that too mm -hmm. um, because they're going into college and they're going to be playing for something bigger than them, just them and their partner. Um, they're going to be playing for, you know, whatever, UCLA, Stanford, um, trying to go for national championships. So, um, I don't know, I think, I would assume maybe that's something that college coaches might be looking for on the court. Um, I know it's kind of hard when they're playing for them to just visually say, like, All right, do you have good character, <laughs> like, off the court? But I think also going to you guys and coaches and um, – having a strong foundation within your club, like, what are your values? Yes, grades are important. Like, how are you treating your teammates? Um, I think it all kind of falls back on coaches too and the club as a whole and like what you got, like what a club's all about type thing. Mm -hmm. And that I have is like, what have you guys been doing to keep your girls proactive, you know, I mean, everyone's schedules are just completely turned around, mine's turned around, your guys is, you know, the club's been shut down, tons of other clubs, everyone's been shut down. So are you guys, you know, getting together somehow? Are you, you know, giving them workouts or directing them certain places to kind of keep them in the volleyball mindset? Or, um, yeah, how are you guys kind of approaching that as a club um, to your players? Yeah, so I mean, I think when we, we first jumped into quarantine. Seven weeks ago. Yeah, forever ago. <laughs> it was uh, it was the kind of challenge thing, right? Like yeah. pepper against the wall, one arm, just trying to keep them engaged. Yeah. And then it Go went from, go. Yeah. Well, not having any idea. Yeah. Right. We're like, oh, two weeks from now, like yeah. it's good that you're getting your touches. Yeah. 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 Um, so it went from that to like a workout. And then it went from that to, like, there are a million workouts, there are a million challenges, because 
Every club is hey, putting out. Hey, I got out. a challenge coming, guys. Yeah, it's, it's a good one too. We're in. <laughs> so, so it turned into from my side, it turned into, hey, go and experiment and see what other people across the country are doing. Right. Try and interact with them and see what other clubs are doing, and maybe yeah. you pick up a partner that hey, I'm going to be in Texas. Yeah. Right? And so once that side of it started flowing. He got fired up. And once hey. he got fired up, I just got out of the way. I was, I was like, all right, Nick, I'm out. You just, you literally call me or text me and you tell me what oh. I need to do. Oh, no. Oh, oh. oh. That's not good. Blooper. We good. Uh, blooper reel. Blooper reel. And literally it turned into, just tell me what I need to do. Right. It's like, I'm a back off. Yep. You started the Zoom calls. Yep. Yeah, I mean, like, it was Zoom calls. It was me trying to trying to like keep innovative. I think my background in teaching of trying to kind of come up with new ways to engage kids, yeah, um, kind of took over. So I started with things like bingo, with some of the stuff that we've done over the time. Like, hey, have you gone to? Oh, I don't know, uh, Brothers Burritos in Hermosa. Check yeah. this off. So we went through and played bingo. Um, that was kind of fun. I don't know why you set that up. Like, I, I asked you how to do the swipe up on the Insta. Yeah, right. like, oh, I got, like, website link here. I'm like, what? Like, how are you more techie than I am? Like, I feel like it should be role reversal. Totally. I have to be. It. My, my job at, at school, all we're a tech school. So all the kids come to school to kind of be involved in tech. Yeah. But yeah, then it was Zoom calls, and then it turned into, we played, we did an RPM trivia night the other night. Which oh, was I heard, fun. I saw that, yeah. Um, where they... We did a bunch of trivia questions about ourselves. We're actually on Thursday. We're going to play a trivia game oh, where nice. the kids have sent me a bunch of things about them. Oh, that's cool. To kind of play. Yeah. yeah we're doing that online, so it's kind of fun. Gosh. Yeah. They've been talking. They talked to, oh gosh, they talked to you and Sarah. They talked to Casey. They talked to Jake. And I'm just, uh, so you guys are just trying to Misty. get. Misty. Yeah. Yeah. Just pro players on Zoom calls so yeah. their kids can, your kids can ask questions. and. Our alumni. Yeah. Uh, so some of our kids that are actively in college right now, mm -hmm. so they can ask some of the hard questions. You know, what's training like? Things that right. we can't answer. Yeah. Um, and they're in the, the heat of things too, and um, yeah, just like how they're kind of taking this. But I think the biggest thing is like making sure that kids know that they're not, you know, alone in this. Like everyone's feeling like, what is going on? Like no one's ever experienced this before, and. It's so easy for kids to like not, you know, be connected and not reach out, and not ask questions. But we're all going through the same thing, and um, I, I like how you guys are just able to get anyone just on the Zoom call so they can ask questions and um, yeah, just stay connected that way. I think that's like the best thing that we can do. So challenges, workouts, <laughs> Zoom calls, um, more workouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I know, it's... And, and like you said, like, unfortunately, everybody's doing the same thing. Like yeah. we are all stuck at home, or we're stuck going for a walk. I mean, those are our options right now. Right. And um, I know it was really hard for me at first because my brain was like, "Other oh, clubs are out there grinding, and we're stuck." And then I know it's you, you start looking, and you're like, "Oh." Yeah. Or everybody else is stuck too, but right. But uh, it like it makes me anxious for what's you know to come too. It's like, well, we're in week seven now. We're kind of like getting into our routines, doing like going on walks, doing random workouts, you know, on YouTube, and then I just like have this like vision of like things opening up and everyone's like on the start line, and then just like going crazy, and then I'm just gonna, like, wait, where? Like you guys are training there, okay? Like I need to go do this and this and. I think, yeah, it's just gonna be nuts. But I'm kinda, I don't wanna be the follower, but I'm just like, what is everyone else doing? Like, am I doing the right thing? But. Yeah. Well, I think it was important for our girls to hear that, you know, the college kids are doing the same things that they're doing. The pros, yeah. you guys all talk to them. You guys are doing the same things that they're doing. Yeah. So it's not like them sitting there going, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna get to be Sarah's sponsor. Yeah. I'm never going to get to be Misty because I just don't have the opportunity right now because I'm right. shut down. They're doing the same things as I am and we'll all continue to grow. Right. No one's surpassing together. really anyone. And yeah. 
we're all in it together. And I think it's good for them to kind of hear that, you know, we're not, like, Olympic lifting and, like, doing all these crazy things. Like, I have, like, a barbell over there, and I have my mom's Orange Theory workouts. And I'm, like, I'm not sugarcoating this. I am doing those workouts, and it's fine. We're all going to get back to training. But it's good for them to know that, you know, we're not – you know, superhuman people doing crazy stuff that they're not doing. Like, we're, I'm doing the same touches they're doing, you know, in the hoop, on the wall. I was doing it yesterday, and it's a little shaky right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just for them to know and to, to hear that, I think, firsthandedly on Zoom calls or wherever it is, Instagram Live, I think it's really important because, um, yeah, you just don't know what they're going through because it's, yeah, just a weird time. Yeah. For anyone to understand. Yeah, I think it's been neat too, because I know from my perspective, like listening to everybody, like Misty had some great advice. I wish I got oh, on the call. We'll, I'll call her. We'll do it again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we need to fly her here so we can have an interview, like an all four interview. You better, you better start hitting golf balls. We'll do it in California. Oh, we're playing golf. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I'll be, I'll be the caddy. Yeah, done. <laughs> done. But like one of the things that Misty said was. Pick something that you don't know how to do and do it. Like, is there anything that you've wanted to learn? YouTube. <laughs> yeah, YouTube. Like, I'm 44 years old. I don't know how to drive a stick. Shocker. Did like, you learn? I'm in the process of trying You're to find the stick, learn? which is not easy. I've never ridden a horse. Yeah. Like, eh, I know somebody that owns horses. Yeah. Learn how to ride a horse. Yeah, like things like that. I want to yeah. learn how to scuba dive. Like all these things now that I'm like, oh, that right. I never thought about. Right. Right. I was so it's busy. It's so cool to, yeah, just realize that you know our lives are constantly like this, but we don't need to do that. Like, right. yeah. our lives don't depend on us going yeah. at that fast of a pace. Yeah. Yes, we want to like make an income. Yes, it's like important, but at the same time, like you don't want to look back in 20 years and be like, okay, I grinded my, you know, butt off for this amount of time, but I only focused on this one thing, and what if, like, you want to do other things, like, yeah. um, I think, yeah, so, horseback riding, horseback. I just want to stick learn shift, yeah. Yeah. scuba diving, uh, what else? Nick, what are you doing? Yeah. What have I been He's doing? mastered the Zoom calls yeah. that I still need to master. I don't know how to mute people or bring people into the discussion. Like, he threw yeah. questions up on the side. I, I was like, how'd you do that? Yeah, I didn't know there was like a premium, like like you get like four, like above 30 minutes if you yeah. pay X amount of dollars. Uh, yeah, well, it just it's, shuts I you down it, after 30. I think it's a lot of like, for me, I was in the mad scramble because I'm still teaching too, to try and learn all the tech to get the kids back involved and back engaged right and taking spring break off and then another week a lot of kids were just like hey uh, okay. like, yeah. so already know be, spanish yeah, Nick. Yeah, right. <laughs> like i'm gonna teach you spanish <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll learn everything. I'll give you weeks. a lesson. Yeah. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. it's difficult. It's a challenge for sure. But I don't know. I think we all are kind of making our way through it. It's nice to connect with people through Zoom calls, through calls, getting that, that community back together and just sitting here kind of having a conversation. Yeah. Because I think sometimes through all this, like I texted Riley yesterday, I was like, dude, I miss you. <laughs> yeah. Like saying that you miss someone. Yeah. Like, like, dude, I haven't not, seen you in forever. Like, yeah, this is crazy. Sometimes those words like don't come out of your mouth mm-hmm. until like crazy times, or just like yeah. hugging anyone. I'm like not a hugger, but I'm like, <laughs> right. I'm like, when was the last time I hugged my mom? Like, oh my god, mom. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah it's yeah. just weird. And um, no, I haven't seen my mom in a month. Not good. That's. Yeah. Do you face her? Mm-hmm. It's faces now. It's good. And when you're texting somebody, driving by in two minutes, you want to catch your gear, drive by, poof, yeah. throw in the backpack, they're like, mine, dude, just keep on driving, you're right. like, eh, I feel like the paper boy. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's funny how that works. <laughs> but we're all learned, doing it. Have you learned anything different? Anything new? Tech-wise? Or, or just, just anything. anything? Have you general? been oh, horseback gosh. riding? Have you... No, I have not been horseback riding. Actually, you know what, I went horseback riding as a little kid, 
It was fun. Yeah. Yeah, until the tree branch caught me across the chest and knocked me oh, off. Oh, oh. It was fun. <laughs> Don't say Growing that. Up in stuff. Flags, that Horse goes straight towards the yeah. branch. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. There we well, go. I was looking back. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. I was out riding in front of my friends. It was a photo shoot, but you're not going to tell us. Well, yeah, no, you're going to tell us. <laughs> I was like, oh, well. I was like 12. 12 year old gap photo shoot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was, that was fun. No, no, learning new things. Um, I think the things that I've learned over this are, are things like how important my family is to me. You just don't ever kind of think about that until you're like, wow, like I haven't seen my family in a month. Right. You know? So trying to make sure that we still connect and get in on those calls is been good. Um, yeah. I think I've tried to also kind of look at a lot more people's uh, interviews and things. I started a blog. Dude, yeah, you've been killing the blog. <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah, your blog. I'm trying blog. to blog, and you're just like cranking out articles like every other day. I'm like, oh my god, that's a good idea. I should, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. No. How'd you beat me to that? Yeah, I'm just like, oh, that's such a good idea, but like, I never get to it. It never pops into my head until you're yeah. done writing it. So. Yeah. I'm like, well, I gotta think of something else that you're gonna People steal. Like, it's four o'clock in the morning. Your blog being posted. I'm like, man, I got nothing else to do. Yeah. Tonight, so. No, that's it's really good. I yeah, I started the website, YouTube. Yeah. And it's just crazy what yeah, I don't know. I I've, I've been talking to some of my friends, but I feel like my 6-year-old self again, you know, like a sponge I'm trying to like regurgitate every like volleyball information like how do I hold my platform? Like, oh, setting like all these different things and I just remember trying to like learn as much as I could as fast as I could. Yeah. And now I'm like in this quarantine, I'm like, "Oh my god, how do I like the CEO of like how do I rank on Google and like all this like random stuff that these people know about and it's just like a completely different world and YouTubers I give you all the credit because that stuff is so hard if you've not seen my bloopers it's hard for me to do any intro or conclusion or anything the first try but it's it's so yeah it's crazy what we don't know and I've just been like trying to like learn all this different stuff and read and all the things that you just don't have time for and it's just like refreshing to to feel like your life is not just what we've been doing or what you guys have been doing yes you have have had so much success in the past six years and it takes a lot of work to get there but that there is life outside of that and um yeah like what you want to do with that time right so i think it's it's interesting to think about like that all of a sudden you can look at something and go well i'm actually really interested in that I never it's knew weird. I was really interested in that. I know I'm really interested in that. Yeah, it's it's like <laughs> weird and like scary because it's like for you guys, you are volleyball, like, I mean, Spanish, amazing Spanish teacher guys, um, and volleyball, the volleyball, but now it's just like what interests you and it's kind of scary to be like, oh my god, like, I'm really into these, like, this website, trying to figure this out, like, I don't know what's going on, the swipe up on Instagram, like, now I know how to do that, it's just weird, but it's kind of scary to be like, well, like, Am I still going to be as interested going back to, like, normal life? Yeah. And when I, like, go back out and practice, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm still frustrated with this line trial. Like, it's still still in it, still have the passion for it, but it's just weird to feel, yeah, just interested in different things. But it's, like, it's a good feeling. Well, I think Misty brought up something else the other day on her, on her Zoom that was interesting to me was, you know, when, when we come out of this, how many people are going to go, I didn't really miss this, 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 or this that yeah. much. Maybe or like they'll take another, uh, like a different path, like right. quit the job, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. started whatever, blogging or right. doing art or whatever it is, yeah. designing. Yeah. And I wonder how many people are going to realize like this is, what they're doing now is not what they want to be doing. Right. And they want to, they're actually going to start a job or, um, yeah. yeah, go for something that interests them. Yeah. That like actually makes them happy. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like before that everyone was at such a high pace that they didn't have time to step back and realize, okay, this is not what I'm going to be doing. And, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it'll be interesting yeah. what the yeah. world has in store. Yeah, I don't think there will be any in between. People, are, It's going to be enough time where people are either going to make a change. Be an alcoholic or... If that's enough, <laughs> that is possible. They will be an be really alcohol connoisseur. Right? <laughs> I'm a huge fan of this brand. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, they're either going to be moving on to something else, mm-hmm. or I know for me, 
I wake up in the middle of the night at four o'clock in the morning so I can scribble down notes on how practice is going to be. Yeah. So reinvigorated. It, it, you just get reinvigorated from right. you know from whatever grind it was, whether it's volleyball or yeah. you know get. the tax accountants right now must be like. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. I mean things like that. Like you know you, you got to realize you either do or don't love numbers. Right. right? So I, I yeah. think there's not going to be a lot of in between. I think people are going to. Know, really know what they want to do. Really know, and I think that'll be that'll be great for I think the mm-hmm. juniors volleyball community because yeah. it will it will cut all the fat. To be totally honest, I think coaches that aren't into it are going to be like, I just wasn't into it. I was doing right. it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, and even they move on. even girls um, right now, it's like maybe they want to like you know start a different sport or something yeah. that's interesting to them or. You know they're more interested in school and like doing all of that and um yeah it gives them time to kind of step back because they're always like on the grind practice school mm-hmm. like school practices whatever it is and they don't even have time to step back and be like okay and are my parents forcing me to do this do i really want to do this like do i not want to let my coaches down um, like what their you know why is like why they're doing what they're doing so um that'll be really interesting too It'll be neat to see. No doubt. It's going to be chaos. For sure. That For you sure. can guarantee. Um, that will be no doubt. All right, guys. So I know we went through a lot of different topics from recruiting to lots of tournaments, how the sport has grown, what tournaments you should maybe, well, you should go to a lot of them. Um, go to but if you guys have any questions about what the recruiting process looks like or just deeper questions into what we've talked about Today, I know it's a lot. Please feel free to reach out to me on my website sarahsponsel.com or just through Instagram DM um, Anything so I'd be more than happy to help you guys and I got some amazing resources right here. So um, that can help me out as well. So don't be afraid to reach out and um, Yeah, ask away